The year is 2004. I was living in Austin at the time. It was really like the best time to live in Austin, to be fair. Normal day at work, I went to break, and they had one of those TVs that was on those like old school trolley things. We had a giant lunchroom, and I remember the news was talking about a discovery, an asteroid that was going to slam into us, causing scientists to panic. Torino scale, high chance, Armageddon. I'm sorry, what? Confusion, scientists were scared. And this, of course, was the start of what I like to call the age of my cosmos panic in my life. Which I remember both being sort of like a blur of information and panic feeding my anxiety. This one specific trigger. I vomited over this damn rock. Before we get ahead of ourselves, hi, I'm Crystal. This is getting spooky, where we talk about the creepy, weird, and obscure. And today, we're talking about, I guess, my Roman Empire some shit. Today, we're talking about Apophis and how it literally changed my life and taught me what a panic attack really is. Thanks, fucking asteroid. It started with dreams when I was a teenager, before the films, before anything like this was even really discussed in the mainstream. I had dreams of this happening over and over, different scenarios, just being present for it. One of the dreams I recall was sitting in a sort of half-court basketball court, like a small park watching this large falling star fall to the ground. One time I was at a barbecue. It was late day and it was stormy on one side of the sky and then the other, the meteor was falling. I mean, you get the point. I should mention though that I usually have really weird dreams to begin with, so it wasn't anything that was concerning to me. It was just one of those, hey, check out the dream I had last night type deal. Well, anyway, then Armageddon and Deep Impact, those films came out at like 1999, and they were mostly sad and destroyed my teenage emotional heart with the love stories, so it wasn't really something that scared me. Deep down, I guess I just thought that the government or the people in charge, whatever, would fix it. Well, Apophis was discovered on June 19th, 2004, by Roy A. Tucker, David J. Tholin, and Fabrizio Bernardi, and they were using their equipment at the Kitty Peak National Observatory. I think it's in Kitt Peak. I think it's in Arizona. Don't quote me on that. I often wonder, like, when you discover something, why you would name it something so doom and gloom considering. You know, like, Apophis is the Egyptian god of chaos. Didn't they have, like, a list of names that you could, like, use? What if they did confirm Planet X and the dude that found it wanted to name it Nibiru? I mean, the opportunity is there. Why wouldn't you take it, right? Well, the thing is, is that it turns out the scientists that discover it were fans of Stargate 1, and it was their favorite character. So that answers that question. Either way, when it was discovered, it was a pure don't look up moment. It scared the hell out of the scientists involved. In December 2004, when initial observations were done, it indicated that the probability was about 2.7% that it would hit Earth on April 13th, 2029, Friday, because of course. Almost 3% may not seem like a lot, but in terms of space and mass casualty type shit, 2% is quite a lot. So naturally, astronomers were concerned. They mathed and they mathed and they mathed. Apophis in itself is called an S-type asteroid. It's rocky, made up of little small rocks and some metals. It's about 1,100 feet across, so a bit bigger than the Eiffel Tower, which is about 1,060 feet across. 340 meters for those of you who can't see feet. As you can see, it's fairly large, and despite what it's made to seem, it is not a planet killer based off of size alone. Now, it's still capable of fucking some real shit up, absolutely, and we'll get to that. On its first flyby, because there's three very close ones, the first one happening on Friday the 13th we talked about, it will be lower than most satellites in the sky visible to the naked eye in parts of this southern hemisphere, and will be about as bright as the stars in the Little Dipper. It'll pass about 19,794 miles above our surface, so about 3,100 meters if we want to get all numbery. I just like to say close as fuck. Way too close for my liking, really. During that flyby, there is a concern of what they call a gravitational keyhole. This little space in space is about 800 meters across, so if Apophis flew through or near that little space, it would alter Apophis's trajectory just enough to impact in 2036, which is the second flyby. Then another in 2068. All three flybys are a concern. 
like I said before, these guys were mathing. The concern is also that one side of Apophis is experiencing something called the Yarkovsky effect, which is basically the sun heating up the asteroid on one side. And this will cause things like gases and water vapor to emit from the little crap, whatever it has from its travels through space. And that sort of thing can also change the positioning and the trajectory of Apophis. Don't worry, though, they math that also. It's about 500 feet-ish a year. It varies also, so that can change, which can change all of the above, by the way. Anyway, moving on. The concern is so great for this thing, named after the god of chaos, that they even mathed what objects it comes across in the orbit, just in case it bumps into something that changes its orbit just enough. If Apophis were to hit us, the path is probably the worst case scenario as it passes over some of the most densely populated areas in Europe, Asia, and India. The blast would be massive, 880 megatons specifically, and any and probably all volcanoes in that area would explode. If it comes in at a 45 degree angle, its crater would be about 0.5 kilometers deep, with the crater itself being about 2 kilometers wide, or 1.2 miles. Just to compare, the crater in Arizona, the meteor crater, measures about 0.75 miles across and is about 600 feet, or 180 meters deep. And that crater is massive. One day, I'll take y'all there. Well, upon impact, any and all that was under it would shoot up in the air. If it were water, it would cause tsunamis hundreds of feet high. It would cause a crater in the ocean floor that would then have to be refilled. It would also launch super hot water vapor in the atmosphere. If it hit land, it would send rock debris thousands of miles in the air, and what goes up must come down. There's a quote from the film Armageddon I really love where Billy Bob Thornton is like explaining the asteroid to people and he says basically it's the worst parts of the Bible. And if you think about it, it would be really, really bad. Every year, the U.S. government runs a planetary defense tabletop exercise. It's designed as a full simulation start to finish from detection to impact. There have been several so far and the first initial ones I recall didn't go so great, but the good thing is that it's designed to simulate an actual event so the participants are able to identify holes or things that are needed that may not have been thought of in a hypothetical type situation. Things have gotten better and as the years have gone by and my thoughts are, listen, if they can practice and they want to practice forever and ever, let them practice do what they need to do. There have also been combined efforts in sending up things to space to do things like study and intercept. We recently sent DART up and it intercepted a tiny asteroid moon to test to see if that was possible in a defense situation, basically moving it a little bit out of the normal orbit. While it is possible, there are some things that they also noted as an aftermath of the DART test. One being the tiny and not so tiny mini rocks that we blasted off into space when DART smashed into the moonoroid. But see, now we know. This video isn't meant to scare you. Because Lord knows I've stressed over this subject in my own time. My thoughts are this, right? If these people in charge can throw trillions and billions of dollars at blowing each other up, they can dedicate it elsewhere to devoid an asteroid if needed. The fact that there are tabletop tests being done every year and we're sending up probes to take a look and see what we can do, at least they're doing something. At the end of the day though, it's out of your control as a person sitting here listening to me ramble. And that's okay. That, I think for me, was what I needed to just kind of let this trigger go. Live your life peacefully and full of love, cause you never know when an astro will fall out of the sky. 